Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello. Welcome to episode 227 of Wise Advice. And I'm not sure how closely you're following along, but I open every single show uh, by letting you know I believe in you. I think that's probably one of the most critical things we can learn on this journey is that, that there are other people who understand what this journey is about. And they've done it. They've been able to to have the success. And they turn around and remind you that that they're just regular people. So therefore, if they can do it, you can do it. And so as I did it and continue to do it, I know that you can do it. The things I got going on in my life are, are just as crazy as the things you have going on in your life. But I found a way to make this the priority. And that's why I believe in you. And, and when you believe in yourself, that's when the magic happens. Up until that point, you certainly can rely on the my belief for you and the community's belief for you. You know, our our Facebook group is incredible, thewisewingmen.com. If you haven't joined in there, please do. Uh, It's an amazing group of folks who just believe in each other. I mean, you know, it's funny. I've been in a lot of Facebook groups, and, you know, I think in the time that we've had this community, maybe one, maybe two posts total have been reported and removed. The rest is just full of positivity of people getting it done. And so always appreciate you guys being there in the group. Uh, Always enjoy again, hanging out with you live on Facebook. We're live on Instagram. And of course we're live on YouTube as well. If you follow the show on Twitter at the wise advice handle, uh, I let you know exactly when the show is going to happen. It auto tweets for me. It lets you know when the show is going to be. It gives you a 15 minute reminder and then it tweets out at the exact moment that I hit play. And so what I do is I actually sit, I'm ready, and I wait for that tweet to auto-tweet, and then as soon as it does, I hit live, live, live on all the devices. So that's the best way to find out when the show is. Go to Twitter, uh, forward slash wise advice, follow that account, turn notifications on, you'll not miss a single episode live. We like to hang out as a community uh, in the live show. Gives us a chance to kind of catch up, see how everyone's doing, and really truly dive in before we get there. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for being a part of the show. I want to open up uh, this show with Anna's email. Uh, you know, I asked you to write down your your why. I, you know, I go through the five questions that I've developed and said, you know, do you believe you can do this? And what are you expecting to get out of this journey? And what's in your way? And what's the hardest thing you've ever done? And who was responsible for your success? Th- those questions are instrumental in helping you develop your why. So a couple episodes ago, I asked you to, to answer those uh, those questions so that we could walk through it with you. I started doing some phone calls with individuals and said, you know, let's walk through this you know, together and spend about an hour or so on the phone. Uh, and that's incredibly valuable. But, but I want to take your email that you sent in and I want to kind of do an online version of it. And we did it in the last episode. We're going to do it in this episode again. Anna writes in and I said, you know, Anna, what's the, what, what are you expecting to get out of this journey? Like, like for real, like, like when you, when you joined, what were your expectations? Were your expectations just to just, just kind of walk into the room and hang out or, or did you have greater expectations for the program? And so question one is what are you expecting to get out of this journey? Now, if you're following along at home, you should probably have a pen at this point. If you're driving, uh, please don't uh, write this down. Continue to drive. Maybe listen to it again later. But when I ask, what are you expecting to do this journey? Anna says, well, I feel like I'm destined to be a fatty all my life. Like maybe I don't deserve to be beautiful, but I, I am really hoping to become a more healthy person, mind and body, and to get a handle on this weight and food emotional issue. It's a mind, body, soul thing for me, not just weight loss. 
Number two, I ask is, Anna, do you believe, do you believe you can do this? Anna says, I, I don't think I do. But I'm determined not to give up ever. I follow up with the next question is, is well, then, then what's in your way? What's stopping you from being the greatest version of you? What's stopping you from having the success that you know you're capable of? Anna writes in and says, well, the lack of focus and planning is my spurges. Having to think not just about what I'm going to eat, but also what the other three people are going to eat and like in my home. Man, if I could just feed myself, it would take off all of the pressure. I asked her, what is the hardest thing you've ever done in your life? And she said, well, be nine months pregnant in July in Georgia. Is this harder or easier? And she said, well, this is easier, but uh, longer. I've been on Weight Watchers uh, this time for three years, and I've lost a total of 18 pounds. And I asked the last question, is, is who is responsible for your success? And me, me, I'm the only one responsible for me, my life, and my happiness. Anna. So Anna, great, uh, great effort putting this down. And I want to kind of, I kind of want to dig a little deeper here. And, and here's where I want to take this. When I ask you these five questions, I'm asking for a reason. I, I, what I want to do is I want you to grab a pen. I want you to grab a paper. I want you to dig into the creative part of your brain and really tune everything else out. As you put pen to paper, as you start writing things down, you start getting a little more detail. I want you to spend some time with this question, these questions. And so when I ask you, what are you expecting to get out of this journey? And you feel like you're destined to be a fatty your whole life. Well, you know that's not true. You absolutely know that's not true. And I want, to, I want you to strike that from any sort of memory that you ever have because, because no, dang it, that is not true. You are not destined to be fat your entire life. You have the ability to take control. You have the ability to move forward. And we're working on doing that. And you're actually doing it. You know, you absolutely do deserve to be beautiful. You, you can make that decision now, and that decision now is you internally owning it and saying, I am beautiful now, and, and just actually doing it. It's simply that simple. You follow up with, but I'm really hoping to become a more uh, help, ha healthy person, mind, body, and soul. Well, as we know, this has nothing to do with hope. I open the show with that, and so or end the show with that, I should say. Uh, if, if hope is part of your equation... I want you to take a minute to think about that. Think of all the things that you hoped would happen throughout your entire life. Think of things that you want to have happen. If you, if you hope for them, they don't happen. You actually have to do them. right? You, you can't just sit there and hope to buy a house. You actually have to go to work. You have to get a job. You have to save some money. You have to meet with a realtor. You have to, you have to start looking at homes. You have to find the home that's right for you. You have to, you have to maybe apply for a mortgage. That, that, none of that is hope. Right? Hope is someone handing it to you. That's not going to happen. This journey is not going to be handed to you. You have to get out every single day and go after it. Get rid of the hope. Get rid of the, the I wishes. Get rid of the I wants. And, and go get and grab the determination. Grab that mental toughness that it takes to actually do. You're absolutely right. It is a mind and a body and soul thing. It has nothing to do with weight loss. Once you get your mind right, so many other things start falling into place. And so weight loss is one of them. You can get your finances in order. You can get your, 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 your job in order. You can get a project that you're managing in order. But you've got to give it that mental grit, that mental toughness where you know that you want this more than anything. When I asked you if you believed you can do it, and you, you, you are honest, and you said, I don't think I can. And as you know, when I asked the question to you, is if, um, if when I ask you if you believe you can do it, if you hesitate, if you pause, even for the slightest, uh, and you don't give an immediate yes, then that's okay. It just means at this moment, um, you know, you just don't believe that you can do it. And so what I want you to do is I want you to, I said this before, I want you to go back and find things that you can believe in. Go back to the simplest thing that you know and say, I believe I can do that. And when you find that, you build on it. Now, this journey is daunting. It, 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 it does take a lot out of us in that sense. And so the mental toughness required, you know, it, may not come, it may come at a sacrifice early on of you not believing it's possible. But there are things that you do believe. And those things that you do believe add up to this belief that you can get this done. And that's what I want you to focus on.
that lack of focus that's kind of in your way and, and planning a, a specific spurge, that, that you're actually working against yourself. So you, you have the capability to plan. You can track like it's day one. You can get in there and you can, you can own this program from the very beginning. It takes you making out a plan and saying, I know what I need. I know what the roadmaps are to get there. I, I've been handed a tool set. Use the tool set, follow the tool set, and get there. Now, of course, it would be much easier if everyone in the house ate exactly what you made every single night. I get that. You should be wanting as a family to eat healthy anyway, so that should make it a little easier. Oftentimes, it comes down to portion control. You know, and so so as you plan a meal for everybody, you can certainly add in things that are healthier. You can certainly make the meal more delicious and, and point friendly. And then you have to kind of just modify, you know, the quantity to get it done. Add some, of course, add some protein into your diet uh, and do that. And so as you now think, uh, you know, what I, what I, I kind of want you to do a little more re- research and homework on the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. And, you know, of course, I've never been nine months pregnant in July. I've certainly been extremely overweight in July in Georgia, and that's not fun either. So, so I, I surmise that it's probably similar in nature, um, but certainly not, not being pregnant in July. You know, I don't, I don't have any, any, any depth to draw from. But, um, you know, so here you are three years and you've lost a total of 18 pounds. Let's celebrate that for first of all. 18 pounds is a significant accomplishment. I don't care where you are in your weight loss journey, uh, you know, three years, 10 years, 50 years, two months, 18 pounds is legitimate work. What I want you to take from this, I want you to understand that you did that. Uh, that didn't happen by accident. That didn't happen by you hoping it would happen. At some point along the way, you have modified things in your life to make a change to do that. So now you've proven to yourself that you can do it. And what I want you to do is I want you to take the mental strength that it took to be nine months pregnant in July and get through that. You didn't really have a choice in the matter, right? I mean, at some point you you couldn't just, you know, you couldn't just do anything about it. You couldn't unbe pregnant and instantly, right? So so you had to actually endure that and you had to use your mental strength to say, I have to do this. I'm going to do this. And so now here you are, three years into this journey, and I want you to take that same mental strength that you took and say, I have to do this. I have got to do this. I have got to get focused. I have got to dial into the plan. I have got to say, I want this more than anything. When you finally do that, and you truly recognize and understand that you are responsible, you, you're responsible for your journey. I can't do it for you. The Wise Wingman Facebook group is an amazing group. We can't do it for you. We can't follow you around 24 hours a day, seven days a week, monitor what you're eating, monitor your exercise level, monitor whatever activity you're doing. We can't do that. You have to do that. As you listen to the show, as you find inspiration, I want you to use that and draw from it. But, but you know, I know as soon as the episode ends, it's up to you. It's up to you to make the choice. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take the plan that you begin. I want you to pretend it's day one. You're in a battle for your life here. For the rest of your life, this is, this is what I want you to focus on, and you have to make this the priority. You have to commit to it. You have to, you know, I'm going to get a little, you know, a little hard on you here for just a second, is that, you know, for three years, you haven't truly committed. My, my, my guess is that if, if you were truly had been doing this for three years, every day committed 100% to it, then you would be in a much different place. And so what I want you to do is I want you to ask yourself, honestly, have you been doing this three straight years consistently, every meal, every day? If the answer to that is no, then what I want you to do is I want you to devise a plan that does that. I want you to dig in harder than you've ever dug in. And I want you to go get it because you are destined to be awesome. You're destined to be awesome. And that's a gift that you can give yourself now, and I want you to celebrate with doing that. So, Anna, thank you so much for writing in and sharing your your why, uh, your why's um, the five questions of your why. I want you to take a little bit more time and dig a little deeper into that. Rewrite as much as you need to, and and get it done. So, keep up the amazing work. So, out of Orange County, uh, Orange County, California, Julie writes in and you know same thing i asked what you know five questions and she opens the, she opens the email with well hi mike uh, well we meet again well you've always been with me a voice in my head a reminder of support and encouragement and strength my problem is i lost the focus to pay attention 
and really listen. I've allowed mountains and mountains of stress and feelings of being overwhelmed and tired silence the voice of positivity. I've lost focus. I once I believed I could reach goal. Lately, I'm not so sure. I've gained a third of my weight back. I'm struggling and I'm drowning and I've lost the will to fight. Well, it's just so easy to give into food and to numb the feelings, to get lazy about exercise and tracking and the discipline to say no to myself. What's in my way? Well, I'm guessing that what's in the way is stress of the days in and outs of life, financial stress, work stress, worries about the kids and how they're doing and if they'll always be okay. My daughter having a disability and worrying about her future, wanting what's best for her, sometimes Well, sometimes I feel selfish for taking time for myself. The hardest thing I've ever done in my life, well, 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 and will this be harder and easier than that? And the hardest thing I've ever done is also the easiest at the same time is to raise my daughter, worrying about her, sheltering her, empowering her to the point that she's now a college student who wants to be a disabilities rights advocate. I am humbled and proud of her. I know I taught her to be a fighter. I know I'm the only one responsible for my success and that there will always be stressful times. I have to be stronger and more resilient than the worst of those days. I have to matter enough to myself. We all do. Currently, my weight is up. My clothes are tight. My blood work is off a little. But I'm healthy. My kids are healthy. My husband is healthy. So I know we are very blessed. How do I reclaim the discipline that I once had? Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for all that you do, for all that you help, for all, the, for all whom you help and inspire. Uh, and thank you, Mike, for being my wingman out of Orange County, California, Julie. So, Julie, a little homework uh, here as well for you. And so, you know, the, the voice of positivity has to be in the front of your brain at all times. You have to take every single opportunity to find the positive in everything that's going on in your life. Boy, it's hard to find them sometimes. I understand that. There are, there are things that just come at you like a ton of bricks, and, and trying to find the positive in it, certainly not easy. But it becomes easier the more we do it. And one of the, one of the things I've done in the past uh, to kind of help see those things is grab a, a dry erase marker and I, and I wake up every single morning and I, and I write on my bathroom mirror what I'm thankful for from the day before and, and what I'm happy about, what I'm proud about. And, you know, it, it, as I started off, um, I, I would write simple things like, I'm, I'm happy that I have a roof over my head. I'm happy that I have electricity. And, and as, as I started adding to the list, I had to really spend the day looking for things to be happy about. And so when you start making the actual physical list, you then have to then start taking an inventory and that that voice of positivity will then start to grow. You have to kind of develop that muscle in yourself. Losing focus and and, and not being able to pay attention, it's there. It's true for many of us. But what I want you to do is I want you to get deliberate in the attempt to find the positive things going on in your life. You're, you're obviously, you know, gaining back a third of your weight, which means you're still down two thirds of the way. Congratulations on that. That's an amazing accomplishment. I want you to be very proud of that accomplishment. I want you to be very proud of the work that it took to get there. I want you to be very proud of every time you said, no, I have bigger goals and you went towards them and got it, got it done. You know, and so when you first started this journey, you believed and that, and that belief carried you through and got you down to wherever you were, wherever you were headed. What's changed? What, what happened in your life where now all of a sudden that belief dissipates? You've proven you can do it. You've even documented that you can do it. You don't have to, you know, the, the losing the will to fight is simply a lack of focus. It's a lack of commitment. It's a lack of you saying, I want to do this. Do you want to do this? Is, it, is, this what is, is this what you're destined for? And the answer clearly is yes. And so um, as things get in the way, you, you know, your, your day, as you kind of uh, summarized your day, I think a lot of us can relate to that. That's the beauty of this group is that, that we have the opportunity to see that we are not alone in this journey. And so financial stress, work stress, uh, worrying about the kids. Yeah, I get all of that. You know, so what I want you to do is I want you to take this journey one step further for you. And I want you to kind of just get organized in your, with your life. 
Right now, right now, you're just going day to day trying to get through it. I want you to get deliberate. I want you to get organized. I want you to make a plan for everything that you're working on. I want you to have a plan for. Do the things that are deliberate. Do the things that move you towards your goal. Ignore the things that do not. That is how you're going to do this. And, and as you dig into, you know, being and teaching your daughter how to be a fighter and, and finding out what the hardest thing you had to do is, is raise a child, that, that's, that's not easy. And you did it. Where did that internal strength come from? And, and as, you, as you know where it came from, all you do is, is use that same internal strength to put, apply it to something else. Being responsible for your success is all you. It's, yes, you're healthy. Yes, your kids are healthy. Celebrate that for sure. Yes, you're absolutely blessed. But, but that discipline that got you started is, is all goes back to why. Why are you doing this? And, and, and as, you, as you started your email, I asked you, what are you expecting to get out of this journey? Like, what, what's your expectation? What do you, what do you want to accomplish? That's what you have to focus on as you go through this process. Is, is so you, you, you have to start the goal. You've heard Steve Jobs says, or I think it's Steve Jobs, right? Begin with the end in mind. Stephen Covey, maybe, I think is what it was. Uh, begin with the end in mind. So what is your end result? What is your end goal? What do you want to accomplish out of this? And then how am I going to do it? But, but that what I want, you're absolutely capable of of getting after. And so it's, it's gotta be more than just being a little bit healthy. It's gotta be more than just having the kids healthy. It's gotta be, gotta be more about you know, my clothes fitting good, my blood work being perfect. Um, my, or as, as perfect as it can get, you know, cause every one of us at some point, once we started giving up those health benefits, it's, it's you can reclaim some of them. Uh, but you know, you really have to go out and so, and, and do this. So Julie, uh, what is it that you want? I want you to say it out loud right now. What is it that you want? Keep repeating it. Keep saying it until you devise a plan to go after and get it done. So keep up the amazing work. Thank you for sharing your story. Thanks for for writing in and being part of the community. Um, You know the community is behind you. You know we can get this done. The next email comes in uh, from Claudia and I asked Claudia, what are you expecting to get out of the journey? I'm expecting to be thinner, to fit into my clothing better, and to feel better physically and emotionally. I believe I can do it. I reached lifetime in March, so I know I can lose. I am more concerned about maintaining because that seems like a bigger challenge for me. When I asked Claudia what's in your way, she said, I just, I just really like mass quantities of sweet foods. I find it easier to completely abandon sweets than to monitor portion sizes. I think this makes me feel deprived. However, once I get started on sweets, I really have no sense as to when to be done. If I have access to a cup of ice cream, I eat a cup of ice cream. If I have access to a gallon, well, that's how much I eat. I really, really do like the stuff. What's the hardest thing you've ever done in your life? Well, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life might actually be to stay focused long enough to lose 80 pounds. It took me about 15 months to reach goal. And I ask, will this be harder than that? Well, yes, I think keeping the weight off will be harder than losing it. Because the losing part had an end date when I met goal. Maintaining is a never-ending battle. I see no end to the fight, and it's exhausting. And I asked Claudia, who is responsible for your success? She says, I am. So she owns it and, and certainly does that. So, Claudia, let's go back uh, to what are you expecting to get out of this journey? And so I want you to, I want you to elaborate here. When we say uh, I'm expecting to be thinner, to fit into my clothing better, and to feel better physically and emotionally, what, what does that mean? What do you mean when you say I want to feel better physically? What do you mean when you say I want to feel better emotionally? I want to take some time and I want you I want you to dig into what that means because you have to kind of put a name to it. You have to kind of you kind of have to put a um, you have to put words behind that one simple word of feel better physically. Does feel for me does feel better physically mean being able to run up a flight of stairs? Does feel better better physically mean you know, mean be able to run a 5k, be able to run a half marathon? Does feel better physically mean you know I wake up on time, energized for the day? 
Does feel better physically mean that I, I spend my entire day smiling because life is just that amazing? Does feel better emotionally? What does that mean? What does it mean to you in your journey? So folks, when I ask you these questions, I, I want you to give me more than just a sentence per answer because I really want you to dig into the, the detail. And, and that's what writing it down with a pen, paper, all by yourself, that, that's, that's, uh, that's how you do it. So Claudia, congratulations on reaching Lifetime back in March. Congrats on that. You absolutely know you can do it. That is proof. That is awesome when we get to that point because we've proven ourselves right in being able to do something. Uh, so I'm very, very proud of you. Now, I, I want to dispel the myth on uh, on maintenance, on lifetime. You know, I uh, mean, there's a couple schools of thought on this, and I want to tell you mine. I don't believe that maintaining it is harder. Yeah, I just don't. I, I get that. I, I get why people do. You know, and if you follow me on my other Twitter, on FatDag, I tweet out from the scale every single morning. I hop on the scale. The scale number comes out uh, just about every single day that number gets published. And, you know, I got into the point where that's just a number to me. I know what makes it go up. I know what makes it go down. Uh, there are days where I have an amazing day with the family. I have an amazing day out and about. And there are times when I choose things that I want because I, I simply want them in the moment with the, the celebration that I'm in. I know full well the impact that's going to have to the scale. And the next morning I get on the scale anyways, because I know I weigh the same amount whether I hop on the scale or not. Nothing changes. And so I allow that to go to the community so that you guys can see that, that it is a fluctuation. You know, the, I, I believe if you're going to try and be the exact same weight to the pound for the rest of your life, yeah, that probably is a little more difficult. But when you get this thing under control, when you finally get to goal, when you finally get to lifetime, which, you know, Claudia, you're there, when you get there, it feels different. That feeling, I'm never given back. So, so sure, I may, I may bounce around the number, and there are days when, when maybe I don't have the full feeling, but it's never so far away that I can't remember what it felt like. I can't remember what it feels like. I can't remember how awesome it is. And so, so that's what I want you to do is, is, is not be so concerned about, about this lifetime challenge. You're in this for the rest of your life. You can do this. It, it's simply a matter of balancing all the things you got going on in your life. Now, I, I got to kind of give you a, a, you know, a, little, a little nudge here, and I want to push you in the right direction with this, is that when, when you've identified what's in your way, and, and it, I really just like mass quantities of sweet foods, you've identified that that is a barrier to your success. I, I didn't ask you, you know, you, you answered that question uh, to what's in your way. So deep down, you, you understand that there is some conflict here. And so there's going to have to be a time where you have to start making a decision on how you want to manage this. Um, I'll never tell you to give it up. I'll never tell you to, to move away from sweets altogether. You know, I personally stay away from many of them, but, but that's my journey. And that, that's what I've chosen to do. I'm not asking you to do that because this is your journey for you to figure out. But what I can tell you is, is that when I found things in my journey that, that I knew were sabotaging me, that I knew were pushing me away from goals that I really wanted, I had to prioritize. I had, I had to say, you know, do I really want that or do I want to make goal? And I, I couldn't have both. They, the two did not fit in the, same, in the same sentence. There's so many things in life that, that I really, really like. You know, I, I would love to, to never pay my bills and just keep all my paycheck to myself, right? I, I would love to, you know, um, I can't think of something else, but there are so many things that I would love to do that just don't align with the rest of the goals that I have in life. I'd love to not go to work in the morning. I would love to, to quit going to work and, and still live the quality of life that I'm living now, but, but the goal I have to have this quality of life requires an income. That income requires me to go to work. So, so when I've identified things that sabotage me along the way, I have to then figure out what is the most important thing. And when I find out what's the most important, I put all my focus and energy on that, and, and I go do that. And, and I make that the, the priority. Now, just a quick tip as you go through this process, and you know, as you, uh, you, know, you, know, you don't have the sense of when to be done, the best thing I can tell you in this scenario is, is start limiting, limiting yourself to a single serving. You know, the point values matter, everything else matters, but, but measure out a single serving. Every single container tells you what an actual serving size is. And so start by having a serving of it. 
do it this way. You know, bring out the ice cream dish, put it in a in a dish, uh, and then put the ice cream back in the freezer before you go and have the you know before you have the treat. Measure out a single serving so that you know the quantity that you're getting, and then truly enjoy it. And, and you know you can you can do this. And so, uh, congratulations on losing eighty pounds. You, you you've proven that you can do this. You've proven that that this is completely doable. You showed so many people the the journey and the opportunity to get it done. I want you to I want you to be proud of that fact. I want to be proud of everything you did in that sense because you did it. And so you now have that confidence to know that not only did you do it, that you can always repeat it. You can continue to do it if you just stay focused on what it is the goal is. This absolutely is, you know, losing weight is hard. You know, I, I used to say it's not hard, um, but I kind of want to reframe how I word it. And so I don't believe it's difficult in that sense, right? Uh, or I don't believe it's hard. I believe it's difficult, I guess is what I want to say. Um, and you can use whatever words you want in that sense. But what I'm getting at is, is this just takes your effort. What's hard is pushing the, all the effort towards this as an end result. That's what's hard. You know, and so what I want you to do is I want you to, to apply that same focus to the rest of your lifetime journey and not make it harder than it has to be. Simply enjoy it and say, you know what, I've done this. I, I can maintain this and give yourself permission and a latitude to have a range that you're comfortable with. Have some triggers that you know that what your trigger points are. Adjust them as you go through, but but always evaluating where you are every single day and knowing that you are successful because you put the focus, energy, and effort into this. You know, so many people are afraid of lifetime, and I, I almost wonder if that's what stops a lot of us, is that we hear so many times that, oh, the, the maintenance is harder and lifetime is harder, and so therefore, knowing the effort we put through to get to goal, we don't even want to get to lifetime because it just seems so much more difficult. I'm here to tell you it's way more impressive. I, I'm so much happier at lifetime than I ever was losing weight. You know, losing weight, I had the scale reminding me I was doing great. I had people reminding me that I was doing well. I had people telling me I looked great. You know, that, that, was, that was a fun feedback mechanism. But I tell you, I feel significantly better now than I ever have. Because, because I now understand that this lifetime journey is giving me a lifetime. That's, that's kind of the celebration. So, uh, you know, the journey is hard enough. Don't, don't make it any harder by putting words into the equation that, that may or may not be valid. So, Claudia, thank you for your email. Thanks for chiming in um, and, and keep up the amazing work. Congrats on Lifetime and getting it done. The last email comes in uh, from Lindsay. You may recognize Lindsay from an earlier episode. She goes, hey, Mike, it's Lindsay again. Let me paint you a picture. Uh, while I take a break from from painting pictures. <laughs> so this past Wednesday, I was in my kitchen catching up on the last few episode, episodes of Wives Advice. I had missed them while I worked. Uh, then I hear a mention of episode 210, you know, the one where you yelled at me to, a bit. Well, <laughs> hearing that episode helped someone uh, made my heart happy. Then it broke a little because I'm still struggling to find my focus. I finished a sign or two, and then the next episode rolls, and, and Lisa mentions it in her email when she started to share her story. I was already emotional, and then she mentions me and says she believes in me too. Next thing you know, I'm sitting on my kitchen floor, leaning against my dishwasher, just losing it. I was trying to catch my breath. I was so upset, so angry at myself. I'm working so much, I'm struggling to put myself first. After episode 210, I answered the five questions, then I rewrote my why. A why, a strong why, a strong enough to make me cry, but I still can't seem to get my act together. I started tracking again, well, tracking 95%, but, but that 5% was the junk that I shouldn't be having. But I grabbed it because I'm in a hurry, so after our meeting last week, I went back to prepping the quick snacks that were low in points. I boiled eggs, I cleaned grapes and strawberries and such, and I made sure I had one point string cheese ready to grab and go. Yum, it started making, I started making crockpot meals the way that I, I could spend that, that way I could spend the extra time working or doing something for me. This week has been better, but, but not great, but better, and now, most importantly, I am tracking the 5% that I was ignoring, ignoring. I'll get there. I am not giving up. So as you know, I had to quit the gym 
Such a bummer. That was my time. It helped me put myself first at 5 a.m. and keep that momentum all day. I missed it. But this past week, a friend reached out and told me that uh, Burn Boot Camp was having a promotion again that I could sign up for. I don't know if you remember me mentioning doing this months ago, but I really loved it. But I also could not afford to do it full time. My mom offered to sign me up for this six week challenge. So I'm going to spend the next six weeks focusing on me. Me! And, uh, and hopefully getting my groove back. I'm so excited for my first camp. I will be in early Tuesday, though. I may be in need of a hug. Uh, I can do this. I believe in me. But I need to make me a priority again. It's easier said than done. Thanks, Mike, for the continued hand-holding. I appreciate it so much. Uh, if you read this on the air, send my love to my wing people. See you Tuesday, Lindsay. Lindsay, um, come on, you got this. You know that you you're incredibly you're incredibly strong. Uh, what you've done throughout this process is absolutely amazing. You've shown some great, great, great success. That all comes from that believing in you, and and here you are now, maybe at a point where where maybe that belief is is turning to slight doubt. You're at that pivotal, uh, sorry, pivotal point in this journey where you have to decide what it is you're after. So, and what I mean by that is there, there comes a point in this weight loss journey it happened for me, um, where where we're afraid of this new uh, this new identity that maybe we're creating. We're we're afraid of becoming somebody that we haven't been in years, at least by the size of us. And so that does become frightening at some point. And so, so many times that, that that transformation prohibits us from breaking through into a new ground. I want you to do that. And here's how I want you to get there, Lindsay. I, I, I want you to understand that, that tracking is the key to success. You have to teach yourself how to get this done. You have to teach this self how to, how to make it work for you. And as you do that, you have to teach yourself properly. You have to give it your all. Every single bit. You have, to, you have to really, really get to the point where you are doing what you need to do for you. And so that, that means 100%. That means you have to give up that last 5% and go all in on this. That's the secret. The secret is, is you have to say, I want this. And if you want it 95%, that 95% is solid. That 95% will carry you midway through your journey. That last 5% is the power. That last 5% is where the magic really happens. Quit being angry at yourself. Don't, don't, be, don't be upset that it's not working for you. Don't be upset that, that you're not working it and, and that you're, you're feeling like you're struggling to put yourself first. Don't be upset with yourself. Fix it. Make a plan to go, you know what? This is what I need to do. Dig all in. And so if this was, if this was your business, if this was something else in your life, you would give it your all. Why won't you give you your all? Are you worth it? You know I'm going to say you're worth it. Right? But I want you to feel that you're worth it. I want you to you know, drop a few key words out of here. I want you to drop the word struggle out of your vocabulary. It doesn't exist in this journey, in your scenario. I want you to, I want you to, uh, to ditch the hope. I want you to ditch the, I'm trying. I want you just to go do it. You've proven that you can. You've proven time and time and time again, again that you know how to do this. You, you went right back to it. You started, you started meal prepping again. You have those low point snacks. You, you boiled your eggs. You cleaned your grapes. You got your strawberries. You did that. And at some point, you slowly drifted away from that. So as you go through this process, when you realize and recognize that, that you're not doing that again, then that's when you have to get your focus back and say, okay, the crockpot meals are working for me. They, it gives me extra free time. It gives you an opportunity to get it done. Now, getting to the gym, I, I understand that the you know the financial challenge there, and it's awesome that your mom stepped up. And um, but there's so many other things you can do. You know, you you really can can really uh, you know, you're just a simple step counter. You know that just walking around and getting it done. And so, 
uh, I, you know, I, I'm glad to, to glad always that you wrote in and that you continue to write in. And so you know that your your journey and sharing it is is sharing it is, is getting everybody else encouraged and as other people tell them that that they believe in you. In a way, I'm kind of glad it broke you down. And you know, not that I enjoy sitting and watching you sit next to your dishwasher crying it out, but but what I think is cool about that, it shows that you want it. It shows that you're in it. It shows that that inside of you, you want this. You want this more than anything. I know you do. I see it in your eye when you come into the meeting. I know you do. You know you do. It's a matter of doing it, making the plan that's going to stick to it and get it done. You absolutely are a fighter. You're, you're just, um, you, you have that m- amazing opportunity to, to light the room up every time you open your mouth and, and smile in the room. You, you have that. Celebrate all that's going well in your life. Celebrate all that's going good in your life. Um, get to a gym, get to something. That's where your energy comes from. And let's continue to celebrate every Tuesday night as you rock this thing. Lindsay, thank you for your email. Thanks for always sharing. Thanks for being a part of the Wise Wingman community. uh, And thanks for letting us celebrate your amazing success. Folks, what is it that you're celebrating? Uh, Let's share it on the air. Let's go to fatdag.com. Send in your, uh, click on the Wise Advice podcast link to send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. Uh, just always want to reiterate that the way this show works is you send email in, I read them. You don't send email in, I don't read them. It's that simple. Uh, so I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. If you have questions, write them in. Let's talk about them. If you have if you have something that you want to share that's good for the community, write it in. We'll we'll do it. Um, but what it takes is this entire community pulling together, rallying together, reminding each other that we're not alone. Reminding each other that no matter how much bad or how bad we have it, that we can do this. We can make choices. We can make a plan. We can we can set our course in the right direction. That's what this community is all about. That that's why we do the show live is so so that we can kind of hang out as a group as well. It's a great community that we have built together, and I, I thank you all for being here. And and but that is going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.